Okay, welcome back folks. This is now part 8 of our terrestrial escape rocket project. And today we're going to do something that's going to kill two birds with one stone. Is Number one, uh, as promised, we're going to do a quick tutorial on uh, FlexiFuel. FlexiFuel is a, another fuel option that you have, uh, originally designed by Dan Polino and used extensively by Rocketman BKK, uh, who taught me how to make this. And what we're going to do is we're going to make that fuel, we're going to cast it into grains, and we're also going to fill up what you probably recognize here as the insulated delay grain bulkhead uh, that we built together a couple weeks ago in a, in a tutorial. So what you're going to need to do these things is you're going to need uh, your skillet. I have about uh, 100 grams of caro corn syrup in there. I have uh, a 60% mixture of potassium nitrate and a 20% mixture of uh, confectioner sugar. So the the mixture for this is actually 60, 20-20, uh, so 60 of the potassium nitrate, 20 sugar, and 20% of the caro corn syrup. So it makes a very even number to work with, it's 100. So you're going to need your skillet, you're going to need your mixtures, you're going to need your spatula, a couple spoons, uh, a knife, uh, the cooking spray to lubricate your coring rods, and what you also probably recognize, be familiar here, is our Bates grains. I've already put the inhibitor sleeves in there, our coring tools. And the other thing is, you'll probably recognize this as well, this is the motor that we built uh, a week or so ago as well. And we're going to take this plug that we had in it to protect the uh, rocket fuel in there, and we're going to load that one down through the top, because there's more, more than one way to do this. So uh, without any further delay, let's go ahead and get at it. As always, I just start by getting things out of the way that I don't need at the moment. I believe the ideal temperature for this flexi fuel is about 220 degrees, maybe 225. So we're going to go ahead and get our skillet started. And we're going to start by putting our caro corn syrup in. Uh, most of my rocket fuel I use uh, a bit of water to dissolve this caro corn syrup, but uh, for flexi fuel I don't do that. There's a number of reasons I'm not really going to get into it. But what you want to do in this case is take extra care to get as much of this corn syrup out as possible. And it is a little bit of a pain. What I end up doing is I compensate by putting just a little bit extra because I know there's going to be some not only waste, but there's going to be some that I don't get out of the cup. So that's going to start heating up, and then we're just going to start putting our mixture in there. I've already pre-mixed my potassium nitrate and my sugar. And we're going to find that, as opposed to the other tutorial we did on rocket candy, is that this goes along very, very quickly. Uh, this shouldn't take any more than 10 minutes to actually cook. So we'll, we'll cook the fuel, uh, we'll cast a grain or two, and then I'll restart the video, and we will get our delayed grain bulkheads filled up. So grab your chemical mixture, and uh, we're going to do this in doses. It's really important with Flexi Fuel that you don't just dump it in. I mean, ultimately it's going to turn out the same, but if you want it to go relatively quick and easy and come out the way it's supposed to. You don't want to dump everything in all at once. Start mixing immediately. Great thing about Flexi Fuel is you can you can cook up a batch in anywhere from five to ten minutes. It's really that easy. As soon as everything's mixed together and melted, it's ready to be cast. It's not, it's not like making recursalized R candy or even making regular R candy where you have to pay close attention to the detail of how much water is still in your, in your mixture and doing burn rate test strands and things like that. And about the time you have all the, the bigger chunks, mashed in, like you see here, you're ready to put your next dose in. I'm 
been working the last week on the airframe of the rocket itself and on the parachute ejection system and put it all together yesterday. It looks really good. So uh, whereas this morning, as long as the weather holds, is actually going to be launch day for us, there will be a number of YouTube videos coming your way. We've got a static test to do for one of our motors. We have the tutorial on how to make the parachute ejection system. I actually finished up the launch pad, so I'm not going to use a launch rail or launch lugs or anything like that. So we're we're moving right along. We we are almost ready. If you watched my previous tutorial on how to make uh, rocket candy, it took gosh, at least 10 minutes to get to the point where this fuel is already at. And that's the benefit of putting more caro corn syrup in it. Lowers the viscosity, makes it very castable, very workable, almost immediately as you see here. So you just want to move this around, make sure you get as much off the edges as possible. Breaking up all the chunks as you did before. And we are already ready to put this last bit in here. And what I've done here is I've made it up another 500 grams, so I'll have enough for four, four maybe five base grains and definitely enough to do a test strand and fill up both of my bulkhead delay grains. I have, by the way, made, uh, since I started these tutorials, a, a batch of recrystallized rocket candy. Uh, came out great. Um, as you may have seen in other videos or had experience yourself, it is a pain to make. It took me an hour and a half from start to finish. I don't particularly enjoy that, but uh, the results are great. I have a couple test strands of my fuel, the Whizbang fuel. I have a couple test strands of the recrystallized R candy. And then by the time we're done here, we'll have a couple test strands. And we're going to do a, a burn rate comparison because it's important for you to see. Um, another huge benefit of the fuel I'm making now, the Flexi fuel, is that it's safer. It doesn't uh, build up the same chamber pressures in your motors. So if you're like me and you like those safety margins, especially when you first start off on, on any new project, this flexi fuel, I believe, is the way to go. It's good stuff. I think I'll turn up the heat just a little bit. It's sticking to the pan as opposed to melting. By the way, if uh, anybody who's watching these videos is doing their own rocket project, and you want to videotape or photograph any of it and respond to my page, that would be great. Really interested in seeing the progress of others. Rocketman BKK was a huge, huge help to me, not only keeping things safe, but as words of encouragement and advice along the way. Almost done. I don't think since I actually sat down in this chair and started mixing and mashing that it's been really any more than five minutes. And as you can see, we are almost ready to cast this fuel. Just trying to get the excess off the edges to mix it in. I'm going to do a brief pause in the video, restart it and cast some, some grains, and then we'll fill up those bulkheads. more seconds.
you can see, it's very, very movable. You'd have to cook this a long time to get the water out of that carol corn syrup. It's not likely to happen unless you want to sit here and take the same amount of time as you would regular our candy. Okay, so we're actually all set. There's no chunks in here. Uh, take a quick look. You can see it's very, comes off very easy. It's very easy to move around. So for all intents and purposes, this is, this is done. It's ready to cast. As a matter of fact, where I have all my coring tools set up, I think we'll just go ahead and do that. Okay, and like I did before, when I'm actually casting, I put my temperatures up higher, raise it by another 25 degrees or so, because this is a big, thick, gelatinous mess right now. And the idea with flexi fuel is you want it to pour in very, very easy. That's that's a huge benefit of it. No sense in not taking advantage of that. just a little bit. Grab our other spoon. There we go. And that's what I'm talking about. When it's hot, that hot, it moves around much more like syrup or a very runny syrup. That's our ideal. That's why I turn up the heat. You turn up the heat too soon, you'll caramelize it and really lower the power of the rocket fuel. So we don't we don't want to do that. There. Now you see it moving around the way it's supposed to. Just like that. side, we focus our attention on the bait sprains and the coring tools. I've already sprayed these down with the uh, lubricant spray so they're good to go. And we'll start off with grain number one. One of the first things I had to get used to with flexi fuel is that it's so pourable that it's very easy to make a mess with it and therefore creating waste and not getting the quantity of fuel that you were looking for. You'll see me oftentimes manipulating this rocket fuel around with, with my fingers. I really don't recommend that. It's a good way to get burned, but at this point I'm somewhat used to it. And you'll also find if you do decide making your own flexi fuel, all you're doing is you're tamping it into place. Whereas the other fuel, fuel we literally just crushed into there. You uh, put much pressure on this flexi fuel and all you're going to have is spillage out onto the side. So that's grain number one. And 
just it just pours into the bottom. It's, it really is amazing stuff. And there goes the waste down the side. The one downside, flexi fuel I can think of, is it makes a mess if you uh, do your casting like I do. Uh, some people cast this in a very different way. They'll uh, put their coring rods down through, but my coring rods still have the hexes on the end of them, and that's what keeps them in place on the on the on the green board here. So I really don't have that option. Otherwise, I might might explore it. example of that squeezing out, but that's okay. Just put it back in. Right. That should be more than enough. We'll get this one uh, complete here. We'll pause the video, I'll reposition, and then we'll get that uh, get that delay, delay grain put together and glued onto a motor that I already have prepared for it. Okay, so there you have it. Uh, we'll get started on part two of this here very shortly.